Is the system rigged against young people? With home prices at sky-high levels, the job market is feeling more and more difficult to crack, an opportunity that increasingly seems like something that was only available to generations prior. Young Canadians are feeling pretty unhappy with the state of things in Canada. Brendan Caldwell, director at Caldwell Securities, recently presented to a group of those young people, and he joins us to unpack their complaints. Brendan, thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you very much. Nobody knows how to fix the younger generation except the old, not I me, mean, not properly. So uh, let's give it our best shot, Teresa. Now, there are so many young people who say that the system is against them. What would you tell them? I would say they're probably right in as much as the system was built and designed with a certain paradigm in mind, uh, with the technology that existed when the boomers were growing up, that I was growing up. And uh, it's an interesting phenomenon that uh, as the technology changes, however, uh, the jobs that are most at threat actually are the ones that the older generation has. So there's, I think, a system that was created for a uh, an older generation, but I think there's quite a few opportunities, as there has been in the past when there's been revolutionary technological change. I think there's quite a lot of opportunities for the younger generation it's just that they're not obvious right now because they aren't the things that their older siblings or parents or grandparents did. It's a it's a new a new economy that's emerging at present. Now, is there such a thing as generational welfare? And if yes, what is that? Well, uh, I think uh, generational welfare, generational warfare, uh, saying that uh, everything from OK Boomer, which probably a few young people are saying right this moment. And I'm Gen X, I'll have you know. Uh, Not that it matters. Uh, But the idea that generations are pitted against each other, and you'll see this uh, in the way protests uh, happen, even from the 1960s onward, that the old people don't get it. The the system is broken. It doesn't work for the younger generation. And that was true in the 60s. Uh, If you were to believe the John Hughes movies, my generation was never going to make it as well as our parents did. And now we're here in the 2020s, and it really does seem that a large part of the younger generation wants to just tear everything down. How people play on that is by offering to help you. If you're in a war of any sort, it's important to know who your allies are. And there may be some, say, government who say, well, if we just introduce this tax, this capital gains tax or this, it'll really you know, be, make things more fair. But an increased capital gains tax won't really affect me but it might actually make it more difficult for young people to accumulate wealth uh, in the years to come. So I would say to young people, be careful who your allies actually are uh, if you're going to get involved in in generational warfare. Now, you're a firm believer of creating new order. What does that mean? Oh, that seems like a broad statement. Well, I just look back on history, and I think there is a a certain recency bias to say we're not going to be able to do it quite the same way our parents' generation did, and you're probably right. But if you look back to the, uh, the, the time in the 19th century, so we don't go far enough back, all the richest people that ever lived in the history of the world were born within a few years of each other uh, just before the Civil War, so that when America came of age after that great conflict, they were able to take advantage of the new technology. And whether they were J.P. Morgan or J.D. Rockefeller or uh, Stephen Gould or any of those, uh, you were able to do something with the new because you had no stake in the old. And then you look at the the wealthiest people of the 20th 20th century, uh, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, uh, they were all born with, uh, Larry Ellison, they were all born within about 18 months of each other as well. And as the new technology, the computers were revolutionizing everything, they had no stake in the old uh, smoke and, and bricks and mortar economy. They created something new. If only there were a technology right now that young people know way better than I do, like, say, artificial intelligence. I think there is an opportunity which AI is going to wipe out all the old jobs, possibly including mine, that existed, and they're going to be a new way to to use this technology that I can't even comprehend. Now, we do just have under a minute, but what are your words of wisdom to the next generation? Well, I think they really have two choices at this point. They can either burn it all down, which is an option and a number of taking that route, or they can reinvent the system in their own image. They did it in the 19th century, they did it in the 20th century, and with this technological revolution that's going on right now, I think young people have an opportunity 
to just reinvent the system. I would say I would be wary of taking advice from me or anybody else old. I'm not saying that don't trust anybody over 30, but you know, I was asked at this, this conference, well, what are your solutions to it? If I knew the solutions, then they probably wouldn't be very good ones because it's going to be something very different than I've experienced or possibly than even I can imagine. 